In today's episode, we have the beautiful Julia. Julia is a nutritionist. Julia, how are you? Thank you for joining us on Gentle Touch. I'm good. I'm very excited to chat today. Ah, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for taking the time. So Julia had eczema, which you healed on your own? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah? Wow, that is amazing because I saw the pictures and like they look the pictures look rough like it looks angry it looks painful it looks you know it looks a bit flaky as well so to be able to overcome all of that and the obstacles and the journey it requires a sense of strength how was your journey in healing so we're we're going to talk about topical cell withdrawal yes so my journey was long it was very very long so i had eczema since i was born i was born with it uh, and then over the years, growing up from baby to my early teens, or not, sorry, late teens, um, I would use topical steroids because that was the main method of treatment when it comes to eczema. And I used steroids for many years of my life, and it would keep my eczema under control for the most part because they're pretty strong as medications. And um, one day when I was in my early 20s, I decided that I didn't want to be on steroids anymore because I, re- I was realizing that I was using tubes and tubes and tubes of them every day just to keep my skin under control. And I just felt that wasn't something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it's annoying having to apply it on my, on my skin and then still have to do that every single day, bring the medications everywhere. So I started to look into more of the natural healing when it comes to eczema and I decided to come off of steroids in 2015, which is the early, when I was 24? Yeah. 24. Yeah, and then I went through this whole condition called topical steroid withdrawal, which you po- those are the part of the pictures that you saw, uh, where my skin basically just went out of control. Yeah. That's a whole other story in itself. But basically from the day I was born up until the day that I stopped using steroids was just regular eczema, and then it became this... Um, drug withdrawal after I came off of the topical steroids. Did you know it was drug withdrawal? No, I didn't. Oh my god, that must have been so scary. Oh my gosh, it was insane because back then, topical steroid withdrawal wasn't as known as it is today. Um, Unfortunately, more people are going through it now just because of we're trying to spread awareness and let people know that it's it's a condition, especially doctors and dermatologists because a lot of them aren't some of them are aware, but I don't think they're open to understanding yeah. what it actually is. And so at that time in 2015, I had no idea what I was going through. I thought it was just my eczema being really bad. But if you look at the pictures, it's... it's no, it looks weird. something else. Yeah, yeah, it yes, looks something yeah. else. It looks like you would you would think, what skin condition is this? Like, what is happening? What is going on? What is the solution? Where is this coming from? Like, people go into high alert. Yes. And I still have eczema patches here and there that I can heal by myself now. But comparing my skin now to how it was before, it's like, yes, I definitely, that definitely was not eczema. Because my eczema now does not look like what it was before. Which is crazy. Well, at 24, it's very hard, you know, like at 24. Because we're still in that process of, you know, kind of dipping what we like, what we don't like. Kind of, will people like me? Will they not? Will I be accepted? So to go through that on a personal level. And then on top of that, you have the pressure from society. Um, What was everyone around you saying when you were saying, oh, um, I'm I'm, I'm stopping the steroids? Nobody, people thought I was crazy. Because the, what people know, society knows is to use medications because it, it's supposed to treat symptoms, which it does, but it's not getting to the root cause yeah. of not just eczema, but so many other diseases are often just, here's a, here's a pill, here's a medication to take. And people take it for many, many years because it helps them. But what happens when you come off, right? And with eczema, this is what happens. People go through topical steroid withdrawal because their skin literally gets addicted to these medications, which are now not just something that you put on your skin, but it's actually absorbed into your body, right? So I had a lot of symptoms besides the ones that you saw in the pictures. I had hair loss. I lost my period for a year, a full year. You're kidding me. Oh, my days. I lost what? 20 pounds. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was insane. Like, it was, a, it was a lot. And definitely in the early the tw- 20s, is the people say it's like your prime year, right? This is where you, like, go out and meet people and you make friends and you kind of figure out what you want to do. So... 
I did feel like I lost many years of my life during that time, but reflecting back, it's, it kind of needed to happen. Right. And yeah, I kind of think same. of it as like an experience and it's like, okay, this is what I learned from it. And now how can I help other people too? Wow. Um, so, so because not only are you dealing with the withdrawal and trying to heal your skin, how did you, because to lose hair loss, to lose your period, to then that's more things added to the problem, right? Things that we need to look for solution. What were your steps or how did you learn to manage? Because some people wouldn't be able to handle it. They would just go back on those steroids. Yeah, so at that time, I tried everything under the sun. I went to see a naturopath. I saw yeah. a homeopathic doctor. Um, I went to Chinese medicine just to, not just to f- uh, figure out what was, what was going on with my skin, but also the symptoms, yeah. the other symptoms that I had too. Yeah. So um, over the years of working on myself with these practitioners, it got a lot better. So without okay. them, I probably would still... I don't know where I would be, but probably I would still be trying to heal from those symptoms, but definitely did a lot of trial and error on myself, for sure. With, with the Chinese medicine, is that where you did the acupuncture? Yes. Yeah. Okay, nice. And then... And then someone... Sorry, go ahead. Go. So you say with, 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 with the acupuncture, like because it's on your skin, would you do it on your back or would you do it on your face? Or, or what, how does that look like? So interesting with my acupuncturist, I actually didn't find out about her until later in my journey. Okay. So it was actually three years into my journey when my skin was actually a lot better, but not, not good still. So that's why I was, I went to go see her. Um, and she would, she would do it full body, full body needles. Wow. From head to toe. So I, yes, I think I counted one time. She put like 60 needles whoa okay and then and then had what what do what do the sessions look like is it once per week or once how how often and then how soon did you see results or or feel a sense of relief that's a really good question so in the beginning when my skin was really bad um she recommended me to go every week for uh, twice a week oh okay twice a week yeah and so i did twice a week and the first I would say 10 to 15 sessions, I saw a dramatic change in my skin. 10 to 15 10 to 15. is commitment, girl. Oh, because it felt amazing after the session. It wasn't just my skin feeling better, but I would notice better sleep. I would notice less okay. stress. So yeah, it was it was really life-changing at that time because I was at a period where I was three years into my journey and I was still stuck. And okay. I tried all these things and I was like, okay, what else can I do? And that was my last resort. And I just had a feeling that it was going to help me. And it was like magical. I did 10 sessions. I literally saw my skin from being, I used to have really wrinkly, like, I don't know if you saw my pictures, but my hands. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, and she did her acupuncture. It looks painful, though. It looks painful. Like, say, like, I was going to ask you with regards to clothing, with regards to touch, you know, because it looks so painful. It's like, how do you handle that? In that time, three years in, it was less painful. It was more itchy. Okay. It was itchy the entire time, but it was very itchy during that time because my skin was just very damaged from Mm -hmm. scratching and from the steroids. So um, it definitely was. It was painful as well, too. Um, It gets more painful when, when there's broken skin, and that happens when there's excessive scratching. And the scratching is inevitable sometimes. It is hard to control. Yeah, well, one of the tips you gave was fake nails, gel nails, so so you don't hurt yourself. What was um what was you doing? Like, what would help? Like coconut oil because you want something greasy to kind of like just or or was it just unavoidable? It's like regardless, this itch is unbearable. So topical steroid withdrawal, known for the itch being unbearable, it's not just surface level itch anymore. It's the itch that goes in deep in your bones. And you can't get to it. You can't get to it unless you really dig in there and scratch. So it is inevitable. Honestly, it is. And so that's why I suggest flake nails for a lot of people, Um, a lot of my clients, because if you scratch, at least you're not putting as much damage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And over time, the itch gets better as your body heals. Okay, nice. And when it comes to flare-ups on your journey, would you also get in flare-ups in between? 
Yes. Okay. And then how, how did a flare up look for you or how did you identify a flare up? So it depends. So if it was a topical cereal withdrawal flare up, it's yeah. very obvious. It's very okay. widespread. Your skin feels like it's burning. It feels very different. There could be a lot of oozing. A lot of people do ask me, how do you know if it's eczema or TSW? Okay. Unfortunately, there is no diagnosis when it comes to TSW. So a lot of people have to just experience it and kind of feel like kind of self-diagnose. I don't want to use that yeah. word because we don't, we yeah, don't do yeah, that. Yeah. Right. But yeah. because there's no diagnosis for it, that's what people have to end up doing is to be like, okay, what is going on with my skin and why does it feel this way? And then some people are able to tell, okay, this is not eczema anymore. This is a drug withdrawal. Sometimes yeah. it kind of bleeds into each other. It feels like eczema because it's not as bad, but it gets kind of gray, a little bit confusing. But for me, I could always tell because my TSW flares were always very um, intense. And then okay. as it got better, it became more like eczema flares. So more of a patchy, more less itchy. So I kind of I know now because I know my body very well. So. Of course, of course. How big was intuition that it played? Because so with the acupuncturist, you knew inside, right? So when everything is still like stuck, you're not seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel, like you knew deep inside. Yes, I would say I'm a pr pretty intuitive person. I think as a Pisces, <laughs> um, we just, or it's naturally very intuitive. But I just knew deep down that gut feeling. And I always tell my clients too, it's like when you have that gut feeling, follow it because it's usually right when it comes to not just like looking for a practitioner to help you, but just in life in general. Um, but the other thing too is, um, what's I gonna say? Oh, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. You also meant to say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lost my train of thought. It'll come back to me. That's okay. With regards to skin healing, what did that look like? Say like after the after getting the acupuncture, did your period slowly return or was it just the diet help or because once your period goes for a year, like as a girl, we start to panic, right? Unless, yes. unless you're on the pill, because I know some girls are on the pill for 10 years and then it's just their whole journey, right? But if we have our period and it's like, it goes, we know something isn't right. Especially having it be gone for that long, a whole year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So that process was a lot of diet work, I would say, making sure that I was eating well because I was put on, unfortunately, a restrictive diet in the beginning of my journey that I do not recommend anybody to do, whoever's listening, to do any kind of restriction when it comes to healing your skin because when you're going through a condition like this, your body needs nutrients and we lose a lot of nutrients from even just going through the condition because of stress because of inflammation, because of your body fighting it every single day. So I had to do a lot of work in terms of knowing what foods to eat to help heal my body, balancing my diet. And, and of course, supplements played a big role, but mostly with the naturopath that I was seeing. Yeah. When I saw my acupuncturist, my period had already returned. It was okay. still kind of inconsistent. It was on and off, and maybe it would be late and early, but she further help me with regulating my cycle. Um, and then my naturopath helped me with actually getting me to even have a cycle in the first place. So Wow, powerful, powerful. Yeah, because as a female, like sometimes we we just if if something is wrong, we are like, what is going on? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we yeah. definitely know. I love it. I love it. With regards to self love and acceptance during your journey, what did that look like? Oh oh man, that one that was hard. Because then we have so many things that come into it, right? We have the trips. Then it's like, if we're going to a swimming pool, we have the bikini, right? If we're in a relationship, then what does intimacy look like? If we're trying on clothes um, and our skin is very broken and it's very flaky, what does that look like? Are flakes going to be left on the clothes, right? Like there's so mm. many aspects to it. How was your journey like? Or what tips would you give to any girl going through this? So anyone who, is, who has eczema or going through TSW, the lack of self-love and confidence is just going to be a thing because unfortunately how society is, we, a lot of us, we base our self-worth on how we look 
and it's not anybody's fault. I think it's just what it comes yeah. to. And we see Instagram, we see people who are like have all this beautiful skin and, you know, everyone looks great. And so it makes us feel sad, right? When we don't have that, right? Because we want to have clear skin. We want to be able to wear short sleeves and a bikini without people staring us down because people do look, right? When they, when they see you with um, flare ups and it's unfortunate because that's one of the things that make us as eczema warriors, eczema warriors feel really uncomfortable when people stare, when people look, when people make comments. Um, so I always tell people who don't have eczema, don't comment other people who have eczema because it really gets to us. Because it's, it's a, it, a lot of people who go through it feels like it's a part of us, right? Because we, we're, we're born with it and we have to deal with it and manage it. So it does affect us um, in that way. So what would um, people say? Kind of, like, like what, what would people say? Oh, just some nasty things, to be honest. Um, why do you look like that? You know, why is your skin so red? Um, you don't look good today. Like, are like you that. serious? That what yeah, the hell? Like, you know, That's your, crazy. Your skin, looks, your skin looks terrible. Like, you need to do something about it. Like, you know, it's so unnecessary to make comments like that. But mm. sometimes people say it because they, they're generally curious concerned. And yeah. concerned but then there's some people who are like you look you look crazy i've had people who comment and be like do you, are you infectious like do you have a disease and it's like no it's eczema is not contagious i just are going through something right now mm-hmm. and we choose not to explain to people because a lot of people don't actually know what tsw is so some people don't even know what eczema is let alone um yes exactly yeah so then there's this whole <laughs> And then some people don't yeah. even care. So it's this whole thing like, do I get into it? Do I explain it to you? And it's like yes. some people just want to poke at the wound just to get that satisfaction. And then others it's yes. like, are, do you genuine, should I spend the next 15, 20 minutes educating you? Because some people do not even care. Exactly. And you know sometimes when, 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 you, when you see some. well, I know when I see someone, I'm like, okay, this person actually doesn't care. So I'm not going to waste my time explaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are the people who are like, you know what? I'm actually going to spend time to explain to you because you would actually advocate for it. So yeah. kind of pick, pick and choose who I share my story with. Right. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. knowing and understanding because then, because one thing is educating. And the other thing is if you educate the wrong person, I feel like it takes energy from you because you're just like, I just feel drained because it wasn't, we are not vibing on the same energy level. Exactly. Um, skin healing what did that look like uh in terms of like the journey and what like the, actual the, physical? the journey so so you saw the naturopath then the yes. acupuncturist came later on um right how, how, how was the journey like was there breaks in between or was you constantly having someone on your team i constantly have someone on my team okay that's powerful you need it you need it, right? Going through this condition alone is, is, is hard. And if you're not getting support, whether it's their support through a dietitian, through acupuncturist, through uh, a therapist, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you're going to really feel stuck because you don't have the answers, right? Figuring on your own. You can go on Google and, and search and find solutions, but having that uh, support on your team where you can ask questions and have your concerns heard because as patients, we don't often get heard by our doctors. That's why we go through TSW in the first place, because yeah. they don't understand what we're going through. So having someone on, on my team, having people, multiple people on my team was really a game changer because I had someone to help me with my nutrition, I had someone to treat me physically with the, with the acupuncture, right? And then having um, a coach with mindset was also a big component as well, because that is needed during this time right during the healing journey as well i love it that you had so many people on your team for the person that at this stage is unable to afford those services what would you mostly recommend because because if 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 we're not in a position where we have the the money right it's like oh we're balancing it's like okay what can i do like and and some things are pricey even though they're so needed they're so valuable sometimes our wage or I, or our side job or depending where we are in the world the cost of living is so high that we may not have that money to allocate what do you yeah, think was your must needed or what do you think do you think it's like okay first heal 
and then we then we can go on or what tips would you give anyone yeah that's a really good question and a little bit hard to answer because everyone has their own like well, financial situation yeah exactly um so i would say ask yourself what you really need at this point right because maybe maybe you don't need a nutritionist maybe you're you know what to do when it comes to your diet maybe you you actually need a lot of mental health support and so you don't need a bun- maybe you aren't able to invest in all these kind of practitioners yeah. but finding one one person at least to help you right because if it's your health i always say you will figure out a way to make it work a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. You will figure it out to make it, you'll, you'll figure it out. Right. And so maybe don't invest in all these things at once. Maybe just do one, find one person that you really think you need. Maybe during this time, it's a therapist. Maybe there during this time you need a dietitian because you need help with your nutrition. Mm-hmm. Find that one person and then go from there. I love it. What did your mental health look like at the beginning of your journey? Oh, not good. No, not not good at all. I mean, it was uh, a really dark time in my life where early 20s, you know, I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go and have drinks and party, you know, during the yeah. during yeah, those, yeah. those years of my life. Right. I wanted to meet new people and I couldn't because my skin was just was just terrible during that time. So I felt very uh, alone during that yeah. time. And didn't have as much support as I wish I had or asked for at that moment at that time. So it was hard. It was hard, but um, I got through it. I had family. I had a boyfriend at the time that was supportive. So that definitely helped me during that time. But it took many years for me to really work on my mental health, work on my self-love that I didn't have. Self-confidence was down the drain during those years and it took a long time to heal if anything i feel like the the confidence and the self-love took longer to heal than my skin because that how do i explain this that carries that carried on with me for many years even though my skin was doing was in a much better place wow because, that's powerful because i felt that nobody could date me or i wasn't worthy enough to date until my skin was perfect and I had this what perfectionist. Was, what was what was perfect for you? Perfect was like what people see on on social media, right? Like clear okay. skin, like very smooth, like no no wrinkles, right? Like soft baby skin. And even today, like I still have patches where my skin is dry. But I think the old me would have been like, oh, people will notice this, and they're not going to like me. Mm. But over the years of being like, you know what? Nobody has perfect skin, right? And I should love me for who I am. And my skin is actually, uh, like, from for me having patches of eczema that in my skin yeah. not being super soft or super, you know, baby skin. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Like, you know what I mean? I went through this journey, and this is basically, uh, how do I say this? I feel like I'm not wording this properly. <laughs> like, going through this journey and having these scars actually makes me a beautiful person. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, a hundred percent. I love it. Right. Um, did you have the your boyfriend? Did you have him at the beginning, or did you find him in between? Beginning. Oh man, girl, that's very lucky, right? Because he saw the whole journey, right? <coughs> what What tips would you go to anyone that is single currently and is scared today? Mm. Because because your boyfriend was with you at the boyfriend at the time was with you at that point he knew you right he knew yes. you for who you were so he under everything under all the flaws under everything under all the scars he knew your personality he knew the outbreaks he knew the flare-ups what would you say to anyone that that is single at the moment and is scared today i think we have to be realistic first when it comes to where your skin is at because if it's at a point where it's painful you can't move you literally are bedridden which a lot of unfortunately patients are when they're going through tsw you're just not going to be in the physical state to even want to date in the first place right Um, and mental state as well because you're just dealing with this debilitating condition 
so focus on yourself obviously during that time to really heal and rest because that's what you need to do when you go through tsw is to give your body a lot of rest it's fighting it's fighting for you right so we want to open up space for the healing to happen by getting rest as much as possible and then when your skin gets better obviously your confidence kind of increases a little bit at that time too because we feel better in our skin right physically mentally and that may be a better time for you to start dating but again everyone's very different some people take a long time many many years before they're really you're they're fully ready to start dating because maybe they have trauma or you know um self-love work that they want to take time yeah. to focus on first before being ready to date yeah no it's, it's powerful everyone is on their own journey some some people heal quicker than others some people we don't know the backstory some people have trauma or they may be scared today or even in intimacy may present obstacles right let alone um have an eczema let alone dealing with flare-ups with the itchiness the flakiness to then overcoming the inner work that we need to heal how important how would you deal with um swimming pools beaches wearing a bathing suit Great question. Uh, it was non ex- non existent during the okay. time when my skin was really bad because the chlorine in pools. Yeah. You know, you don't have yeah, eczema. Yeah. If you notice that on your skin, it dries it. It's out. strong. It's it's, it's strong. strong. It's so it's so terrible for the skin microbiome, and it just depletes the oil, the natural oils from your skin. So with eczema, if you're having, if you're going through a bad flare, you definitely don't want to go in a pool. It's just going to make it worse for some people and it will dry out your skin. Yeah. Later, when your skin gets better, you can tolerate it a lot better. But as an eczema warrior, your skin is naturally more dry Yeah. compared to people who don't have eczema in their genes. So even when your skin is not flaring, when you go into pools with chlorine in it, you're, you're going to notice your skin drier and you might notice some flaring. But again, it depends on the person as well. Uh, when it comes to the ocean, it can actually be very healing. So because of the minerals and the salt in ocean, in the ocean, some people who go in the ocean when they have eczema, they notice that their skin heals. Wow. But I have to say be careful because some people actually flare when they go in the ocean because it's too salty, right? So oh, definitely okay. be careful when it comes to doing those things because it could go one way or the other. Wow. With regards to your confidence and with regards to your self-love, what coping mechanisms did you have or what tools did you have? To help me with my... With yeah, with your, with, yeah with, with gaining the confidence, with getting to the position where, okay, I have a dress or I have a pair of shorts or I have this crop top, I want to wear it. Yes. Oh, I love this question. Um, a lot of mindset work and okay. not defining my worth with how I look. Ooh. Yes. And really stopped caring about what people think of my skin and realizing and understanding that when people make those comments, it's not about me, it's about them. Yeah. Right? 100%. Because, because, yeah. And basically doing that work in terms of telling myself every single day that I'm beautiful, right? Doing affirmations was a big yeah. one journaling, right? Writing down any negative thoughts that I had about myself and releasing it, whether it is through journaling, whether whether it's through talking to someone about it and never defining my worth. That's a big one with, um, or defining how I look or defining my worth based on how I look. Powerful. And knowing I'm, I'm beautiful inside out too, right? And so anybody who wants to hear this and they feel that they're not, they need help with increasing their self love and confidence. It really just starts from the way that you speak to yourself too, right? And not calling yourselves ugly, not, you know, being angry at our skin or anything like that. And it's just trying to develop a good relationship with yourself. And when you have a good relationship with yourself, then you feel good and then you feel more confident and then you feel like you have um, more self-love towards yourself. Wow. How important has been the products that you use on your body? For example, non-toxic skincare. Yeah, that's a big one too. So skincare is really important. I always tell my clients and I tell anybody who's listening, what you put in your body is just as important or what you put outside on your body is just as important of what you put in your body because your skin is a protective barrier of 
inside everything inside right so we want to make sure you're using good products good quality products to make sure that you're not stripping oils from your skin to make sure that you're balancing the microbiome because your skin also has good bacteria and bad bacteria and you want to make sure that you're not taking away the good bacteria as well so good skincare is very important how did you know like for example like if anyone is, is still a little bit confused because sometimes like i saw in one of your posts you don't use the regular sun cream everyone uses no so so for yeah. someone that's like you know because society will throw certain products in our faces like in supermarkets in commercials and make it seem like it's okay to be gravitated towards that how did you know certain products were not good for you so there's a website called ewg.org i don't know if you've heard of it it's, yeah um, i've heard of it so, yeah it's my favorite website um it's free and you can basically assess any of your skincare products household items, makeup, you type in the product that you that you have, and then it'll basically give you a ranking of how toxic it is. And it has evidence, scientific evidence of the different ingredients broken down for you and explains to you what it does, um, how it may impact your health, and it gives you an overall score out of 10. Wow. Zero being the worst and 10 being very good. Oh, so currently your products, what are you gravitate? Are you on like five or how does that work? So it depends. So I have some, a okay. few makeup items that are like three or four. Some three or four? What? <laughs> Wait, is that a bad? <laughs> That's bad because 10 is good, right? Oh, sorry. I said it backwards. Sorry. 10 is bad. Oh, 10, <laughs> 10 is, is, okay. 10 is bad. And one yes. is, okay. So three or four yes. is really good. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's hard to be like, it's hard to get the zeros and the ones all the time. But I think for the most part, if you can get around that range, it's good enough. Right. I definitely want to stay away from anything in the red zone. Mm. It gets the colors get so it also does it based on color too. So green being very, very good. Then it goes into orange and red. Okay. So orange and reds you kind of want to avoid and try to stick with the green colors. Wow. Does it also give you recommendations or is it our job to kind of seek cleaner products? So definitely it's our job to seek cleaner products. You have to basically put it into the system and they will look for you. I've noticed that there are certain brands that are not on the website yet. It's okay. a pretty big data database, but I think depending where you are, like for example, um, I use a brand called Jane Iredale. I don't okay. Know her name right. She's from. I think she's actually from London. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but some of her products I couldn't find on there. But I know it's clean because I'll look at the ingredients and um, I'll be familiar with which ones are good and which ones aren't. Nice. So I love might, it. You might have to search it in that way, which is yeah. Kinda, yeah, yeah. It takes a while to type in the actual ingredients, but if you have time, you can do that as well. And I feel like once once you come on this journey of self discovery of self healing, you would want to, right? Because it's like sometimes we wear products, and it just the way it leaves our skin, and it le- and and we break out, and it leaves it greasy. Sometimes we know it's not right for us, regardless of the commercials, regardless of the society, of regardless of what the girls say. Because sometimes the girls would be like, "Yes, use this product, use that. Look how it leaves your skin," but we know deep down it's no good for us. Anti- antioxidants for skin healing did you ever do a detox how how big was detox i did but i wouldn't recommend it no how how, so, how was it for you it was too intense and okay. it was very restrictive because a lot of detoxes are restrictive right you can't eat this you have to do this yeah. juice cleanse you have to avoid that and it just gets a lot i don't know for sure if it helped my skin i want to say maybe helped a little bit but it definitely wasn't sustainable and it was very stressful. And a lot of eczema warriors, they tend to gravitate towards doing cleanses and detoxes because it's marketed as, oh, it'll help you change uh-huh. your life or, you know, it'll help you clear your skin. But then you look at these diets, it's just like, oh, you can only drink celery juice for seven days. Oh, you can only eat apples <laughs> for five days. And it's just like, you can't live off of that, right? And it gets people in a state where they end up starving, first of all, during the process, but 
what happens when they try to add foods back into their diet they struggle with that right so wow. that's a whole topic in itself <laughs> That's a whole topic in itself because yeah. sometimes we, we are given so much. Society throws so many things at us that we actually f- feel like it's good. But then it's like if we actually sit down to reflect, to actually do it, we're like, this isn't even really helping me in the first place. So it's just yeah. knowing. With regards to antioxidants for skin healing, how did you know um, antioxidants were good like for you? Like in the eczema, in, in your journey? Right. So, uh, so as a dietitian, I studied, I studied a lot in terms of the, the nutrients and antioxidants yeah. that are good for health in general, but also with my own research and trial and error myself, I, I realized that there's a lot of antioxidants uh, where there are not realized there are a lot of antioxidants for skin healing and they come from a lot of it comes from food. When you think about antioxidants, you look at colors. So the more colors you can get from your diet on your plate, antioxidants. yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. So different different antioxidants are found in different foods, especially the ones that are the more uh, the more the more colorful. Um, so getting that in your diet is really important, not just for eczema, but for, for your health in general. Um, and then supplements can also be helpful too when it comes to getting ac- more antioxidants into your. What is your favorite uh, antiox? What is your favorite supplement? like antioxidant supplement? So I'm a big fan of multivitamins because okay. with our food nowadays, they're just not as nutrient dense as it used to be. So multivitamins naturally have antioxidants in them because for example, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, those are all yeah. antioxidants. So I'm not saying anyone who's listening to go start taking those supplements because you want to make sure you're choosing the right one for you. Exactly. Just to give you an example of what are some antioxidants found in foods and supplements. Those are some examples. How was your journey? Like straight out of school, did you go to, to, to college or how was your journey or when did the dietitian come in your learning? So I actually was studying to become a dietitian during my TSW journey. Right okay. when my TSOB started, I yeah. was trying to get into dietitian school. Wow. So that was a whole journey on its own because I was trying to become a dietitian, but then my skin was terrible. So I was like trying to get that sorted. But thankfully, I tuckered through it and was able to complete my schooling to become a dietitian while going through TSW. It was definitely challenging. Um, I had times where I almost got kicked out of school and why? Uh, oh, because of, did you ever miss school because of your healing or how did that? Oh, work? yes. I missed many classes. I had to drop out certain courses. The teachers at a time didn't feel like I was capable of completing my degree. It was, it was a really scary time. Um, yeah. but I pushed through it and I had to fight my way through, um, getting my degree and, here I am. You go, go. Sometimes it's, it's, it's so easily said, right? But when we go through the drama, it's just nuts. Because I remember um, my background is in healthcare. So in the UK, there's a thing called ODP. So you tend to work in the operating room, passing okay. the instruments or helping Ooh. the assistance with the ventilator. Or, I love that. Um, yeah, so I... I, I'm very chilled. Like, I'm chilled. If I want to go to the bathroom, I want to go to the bathroom. If I want to have a little yeah. talk, I want to have a little talk. Yeah. So I work outside. I, I, I work outside when you wake up from anesthesia. Yeah. It's, that, it's, it's that bit there in observation. But I got to the point that before graduation, I had, like, five resets to do. And people were already applying for jobs. And you, and you could apply for a job, start working, and then wait for your degree to come through. But because I had five resets, I wasn't applying because I didn't know if I was going to make it. That's how unsure I was, like, am I going to graduate? So oh it's yeah, so it's very easy. Like it's very nice. I'm very pretty to say it, but when you go through the drama, you're just like, bro, <laughs> this ain't cool. I know, yeah. I know, and it sounds like it was super easy, but during that time, it was rough. Mm. I was like, yeah. it was hard. It you was know, it's not just yeah, like, it's not it's just drama, the part, but drama yeah. with like the teachers the, and the, the emotions, the emotions, and like, oh my gosh, am I going to graduate? Am I going to become a dietitian? 
do people think I'm dumb because I can't come to class? You know, it's like a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a lot. Yeah. Julia, what is your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Ooh. Yeah. That is a really good question. I don't know, actually. That's okay. That's a, it has to be something to do with horror movies, though. I'm a big horror fan. Okay. You know what? I don't like horror movies. I feel like for a whole week, I feel uncomfortable. I feel like someone's looking at me. I feel like someone's following me. I feel like, you know, it, it puts me in this panic alert thing. I don't like it. Julia, what is your favorite book? Oh, favorite book. Um, have you heard about 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think? No. Is it good? Oh, my gosh. It's ranked one of the number one mindset books. Yeah, in Canada or the U.S. It is. So, I, I I highly recommend everybody to, to read it. It is, it's it's amazing. Wow, like that's biased. Yeah, that's a, that's a new one on the podcast because even though I've done a hundred, it tends to be the same books that always come up, like the Gabby Bernstein no books. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's it, it's always like. Yeah, there's always like this little trend, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I love it. If you had a billboard on the side of the highway, what would it say? Oh. Life's too short. Oh, I know. I know, it's, I know it's cliche. I know it's cliche. But honestly, you know, over the years of battling eczema and, and traveling now, it's like, you know what? Life is really too short to be, to, to not do the things you love. Regardless of where your skin is at. If, if I understand if it's at a point where it's so terrible, you can't move. That's different. Yeah. But if it's just mini flares, go and live your life. Go and enjoy the food. Go in and have a drink. Because life's too short and anything can happen tomorrow, right? So I love that. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. Sometimes we get caught up in the moment, in the pressures, in the pain, in the hurt that it's like we isolate ourselves and it's like knowing that so many people have gone through it and it's like you need to ask for help. That's how I started this podcast. I was going through Mm -hmm. a breakup, COVID started. I was seeing people die all around. People were losing their jobs. And I was yeah. like, I don't understand what is going on. So I create a gentle touch as a form of community that even if I don't know the answers, I'll connect people to the answers. That's why in the description, I always leave everything, the website, the Instagram, everything. So that if people want to gravitate and ask questions, they can. So in a way, it becomes like a community because life is hard. Like it is, girl, it's hard. You need to ask for help. <laughs> exactly and i love your podcast in a way where you have so many different guest speakers from doing different things yeah 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 right? yeah that, that was the goal yeah. i know i was yeah. asking uh, like girl i was looking for answers i was like this is hard i don't understand where it be mental or be spiritual or be physical like i don't know what's happening during covid like i feel fucked so i was yeah, yeah so, so that's why i created that's it that's, like, that's the word real fast during covid <laughs> I know, it was a hard time yeah it's like what happened it's like, wow two three three years i guess almost three years went by and it's like, to, to me to me it became a blur like to me yeah. it's just a blur yesterday um, yeah and i'm like i don't even know what happened but 100 percent. that's why i created it mind body and soul so different aspects and i'm just like yeah. we yeah we, we we're creating a, a community out here julia tell me about your socials tell me about your would you yeah, would you ever would you ever start a podcast? That's an excellent question because I actually am starting one this year. Congratulations! Congratulations! She put I this year. She didn't say. She didn't say it was out. She didn't put say. Oh, it, like it's already out there. Like come listen to it. She said this year. Okay. Yes. Sometime this year is my goal because I know it's it's a good way to connect with other people and yeah. be, you know. So I think sometime this year for sure. I don't know when, but I'm definitely is on my list. I love it. Tell us about your socials. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. That's where you'll find me the most. It is at juliachan.rd. There you will see lots of eczema tips, mindset tips, videos, reels. I go on IG Live. Um, You'll see my stories traveling right now. So if you want to connect with me there, then definitely reach out. Um, You or, you know, anyone else who's listening to this podcast. I love it. And what else? Do you have a website? You do have a website. I do. And it's uh, www.juliachin.ca. Would you ever start a YouTube channel? I have a YouTube channel, actually. (gasps) How come I didn't see it? (laughs) Because I haven't been recording for a while. I took a long, (laughs) long break. I did go through two breakups, actually, last year. That's exactly when my YouTube video stopped. And okay. I started traveling afterwards, but um, I need to figure out where I'm going with that. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, there. Very, it's, there. It's, it's, 
it's very easy to drift away because I also have a YouTube oh. channel. So I have one for the podcast and one personal one. And, and, and because it becomes so consistent, you know, it's time to upload, but then it's like, now I haven't uploaded. So I feel like if you, if you allow it to reach the one month mark where you haven't uploaded, it's very easy to get comfortable not uploading. Oh. Yeah. Yes, and it's a lot of work. Like YouTube yeah. is a lot, as you know, as you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's but it's crazy. fun. It's fun, but it's once you once you stop, it's hard to get back on. To be honest, yeah, you yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Would you ever write a book? One day, but yeah. I'm not the best writer. I will say. I think for me, I'm, I'm much. Like, I'm, I like to talk more than I like to write. <laughs> yeah. So, but maybe maybe in the future. I love it. A couple of people have, have asked me to have a book. I'm like, I don't, but. Oh, that's okay. a prompt. It's a prompt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Julia, do you have TikTok? I do. Yeah. And it's Is also it the same Julia- thing? Yes. Julia Chen RD. I love it. I love it. Where are you from? What's, what's your ethnicity? So I'm from Taiwan, born there. Wow. And was raised in Vancouver, BC. Wow. Wow, I've interviewed um I've interviewed two girls from Taiwan. They're very um they 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 they, they traveled, they left. So the way they're brought up is very like good girl, very um traditional, very and they're like yeah. I'm out, like they left. So yeah. It's it's nice to have both sides, right? Because you're raised in Vancouver and then obviously you have the family side as well. Yes. Yeah. I would say, yeah, born and raised uh, born in Taiwan, raised in Vancouver, but definitely was raised raised pretty traditionally too because my parents came to Vancouver as well and um yeah <laughs> I love it I love it um Julia how can a listener support you do you have anything coming out for this new year any new courses tell us about your courses tell us about your services tell us about your coaching yeah so in 2023 um I'm actually launching my new program it's called clear eczema uh, I've been running it for the past two years now but we've just recently made a whole did a whole makeover for it. I don't know when this podcast is going to come out, but we're launching it in the next few weeks, end of or middle of January. And okay. then it's now it's going to be a program where you can enroll anytime throughout the year. So it used to be a program where I only enroll certain times of the year, but now people can join me anytime. Um, it's a six month program. It is my favorite thing to do. Um, it's a whole community. There's uh, different people from all over the world that come join us with eczema, with TSW. So if that's something that you're looking for, looking for support from me, um, coaching from me, then um, clear eczema is something that you can join and you can reach out to me over Instagram if that's something that you want to learn more about. I love it. I love it. That's so powerful. Do you do public speaking as well? I haven't done any in person. I've done a couple like live classes um, for people. So that's on my list, though. I do want to speak publicly in person, like an event or something. But would you ever do day. a TEDx talk? Would you ever do a TEDx oh hell talk? yes, hell yes, I totally would. I love it. I love it. All you have, I love it. All you have, all you have to do is um to sign up to. I think it's the TEDx and to the events in your city, and it will give you like an application. And all you've got to do is sign oh, up. Yeah, I should do it. Have you done it before? Mm-hmm. No, you know what I like. I was in the transition of coming to to Colombia, so it like the timings weren't right. It was just too like mm-hmm. it was off. Like the dates were off. Right. So yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah, hundred percent. Julia, I just wanted to say a great big thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come on Gentle Touch for sharing your story because not everyone is strong enough to carry on through. Right? We see, we see when things go wrong. We see, we see when things go sour, and it's like instead of continuing with it, people just drop out or they go back mm-hmm. to where they started. So it's just knowing that you actually carried on with it, and then now you share your story, you educate people. So sometimes God gives us lessons and teachings so that then we can inspire and heal others as well. So so thank you for being here and thank you for being so much light of course thank you so much for having me on the podcast you're very very welcome girl